What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Investing Bros Live Show. It is 3 p.m. and it is time for a good show. We got a lot to talk about because crypto is down today. Bitcoin uh, dropping below 39,000. It is back above right as we speak. But in case any of you are wondering, is the CME gap now officially closed? Yes, it is. But does that mean that Bitcoin is ready to go to new highs? That's the question we have to talk about. And if you guys have been watching our content over the last couple of days, yeah, here about a week or two ago, I did still think there was an outside chance Bitcoin was going to be making a move above 50000 before a pullback to lower 30s. But things have changed. It is looking very much like 49000 was the top. But do not be surprised. I want to go ahead and just preface this entire video by letting you guys know that you should not be surprised if you see the bulls start to mount a little bit of a comeback. We have a special guest on today who's going to take us through the charts on altcoins and Bitcoin. We'll do some ourselves. We'll cover the news. But I want to prepare you guys, and I want you to start off with this mindset in this series of uh, events that are going to take place over the next couple of weeks. Dead cat bounces. That is when the price drops quickly and then finds its footing. It bounces back to the upside, setting a lower high, and people get trapped thinking that the market's going to go higher. Dead cat bounces do not equal bull runs. Lower highs and lower lows are bull tre- are bear trends, and that is something that I'm highly, highly, uh, I highly expecting to see over the next couple of days, over the next couple of weeks. With that said, though, we have to dive into the charts. We have to dive into the news to dissect what to be looking for so we avoid each and every single one of those traps. Before we introduce our special guest for the show today, I do have to introduce our co-host of the show, Mr. T. Shroom from down there in Gainesville, Florida. T. Shroom, how are we feeling today? Well, Tim, I'm feeling better than I deserve. And Good. You know, I kind of thought that by now you would know that and not have Mm -hmm. to ask, but here we are. Here we are. The markets are surprising us, and so is Big Tim. Well, Tim, I've, I, I'm not going to surprise anybody because you should know that I've mm-hmm. got one of the best quotes right here. Of the day. Yeah. If you fell down yesterday, stand up today by H.G. Wells. Oh, we also got a spoiler of our guest in the uh, – didn't, didn't think through that. Guys, CVO is joining the show today. <laughs> show is gonna be lit man i cannot wait to see what he's got on the altcoins uh but first of all before we dive into details how are you doing cvl man i am uh you know just down the street from my boy t's room and enjoying the uh, weather uh unlike uh the majority of our country so uh yeah things are good man thanks for having me on as always yeah what is the temperature down where you guys are this morning you don't want to know this afternoon now but uh, you know, I had to I had to bust out some shorts. It's like a crisp uh, seventy-eight. You know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, that's rough. What? What? Give it a ballpark T-shirt, ballpark figure. Uh, I don't know. Something that sounds probably about the same as where I'm that's at. That's rough. We're sitting about forty-four here, uh, a little bit outside of Atlanta. So I'm liking it. It's a good day. It's a good, clean and and fresh feeling day up here in Georgia. We had some lows last week, down to eleven. Uh, nothing, nothing compared to, yeah, again, some of our friends up there in Kansas and New York experiencing negative temperatures. Uh, it's pretty rough. I like the cold, but I don't know if I want to get into the negatives. It's been uh, some so epic that, playoff games, man. In these, uh, those temperatures, I wouldn't want to be a fan chilling out in those games. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you, uh, as someone who played football in some cold weather, even though I played in Florida, we had a game, it got down to 10 degrees during the game and you just stop feel. you just, you just don't feel anything. It's, uh. You also don't feel the ball in your hands, though, either. So when you go to catch it, it just bounces right off. So I applaud those guys killing it up there in those uh, frigid temperatures. But, you know, we're not here. We're not here to talk about football or the weather. We are here to talk about the market, CVO. And, uh, you know, you cover a lot. I know in the past you've covered a lot of altcoins. Obviously, you still look at Bitcoin. What are you looking at? Let's just kind of start. I don't care if you look at the Bitcoin chart or the total chart or the Cardano chart or the Ethereum chart. What are you seeing overall in the markets right now? What are your anticipations about what moves happen next? Are we bullish? Are we bearish? Are we neutral? What are we seeing on the charts? All right. Speaking of uh, not feeling anything, right? Uh, So, yeah, I'll I'll start with Bitcoin and then I was going to take a look at Bitcoin versus Ethereum. Um, the The total chart is actually probably a good one to take a peek at, too. 
uh, and then Ethereum, uh, I think is something uh, that, that would be nice. So, um, yeah, you know, as many people have pointed out at this point, right, you got the, you know, macro gold pocket from the overall high to low, right, that we've uh, obviously breached uh, into the inside shoulder here. Uh, as far as volume would go, there was also <clears throat> also a major volume target up here left from 2021, uh, which was a monthly naked point of control all the way back here from December, uh, which is actually where we literally topped at. Uh, so into that macro gold pocket, into a macro volume target, right into some huge hype, you know, as we pushed up 200% into some ETF news, um, mm -hmm. you know, classic Bitcoin, as you get any kind of major, you know, everything's really exciting, obviously, at the highs, super scary FTX collapses at the lows. Uh, so just classic, classic behavior, right? So uh, I have a couple of other just honestly, just super key levels over here. And I'll kind of zoom into these uh, as far as what I think for Bitcoin. So I do think that Bitcoin is potentially topped out. Um, I'm in agreement with you, Tim. Mm. I am also looking for a potential uh, cat uh, jumping on the trampoline deal, right? If that's what we're going to be considering it. Uh, yeah. We've had a couple of, uh, you know, obviously we've had our, you know, nice little swing high into this move. Uh, as you've noted, we've come down and started making some lower lows. So generally what you see is, is that push up uh, into that lower high. Uh, we get the classic uh, middle finger pattern here out of Bitcoin, yeah. right? As we start to get <laughs> descent a little bit lower, um, but yeah, I, I in the same boat as that, right? So looking at this, uh, we've got some. I will really say, big... I will say, I got to interrupt you. Go, you go know, ahead. I'm just looking at it. This looks more like a ring finger. So this is more like the Christian homeschooler who wasn't allowed to use the middle finger, but he still found a way uh, to work it in there and not get in trouble. I'm, I'm just, that, it doesn't really look at the middle finger at this point. I think if you looked at it from this version, right, where you're fitting, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a front way. Uh, no, no, no. But uh, yeah, so, you know, key levels uh, are definitely, you know, to the downside here. We left a lot of things. I've actually taken a few of them off just so it wasn't super cluttery. Uh, and this is actually just from last quarter here. Um, but I did want to kind of hit on one uh, specifically that, you know, I know Magic Internet Money has talked on a bunch. Um, uh -huh. And we look at like a lot of these high time frame averages, right? So much like a moving average, like a like a 50 day moving average or a 200 day moving average. Um, there's actually just averages of price uh, for certain time periods. So uh, for a, yesterday, for a week, for a month, for a quarter, for a year, for six month time frames, there, there's averages of price for all of those. And the market tends to, uh, you know, be efficient and revisit those areas. So uh, for a really good example, last year, we opened up the year down at 15 K. Uh, and the average of price from the year before, which was generated as 2023's yearly average, uh, was a major target as we came into it. Obviously, it wasn't the end all be all, but it was a nice area to just kind of look to uh, for some confluence. Uh, spent a lot of time around here, as you see. We've obviously reached into the 49K area. And one uh, area that is, you know, just got my attention is 34,500, which is this year's average of price from 2023. Um, yeah. And, you know, this is a definite like high time. I don't think we're going to just nuke straight to these areas. Um, like I said, at this point, we've already kind of made ourselves, a, you know, a nice little way to the downside. I think that a bounce is, you know, either it's coming now uh, or potentially a little bit lower towards this 37 and 36 K area. Um, but I, I like this uh, this weekly level I have highlighted up here, this 44 K uh, potentially even up to like 46. But I do think that overall Bitcoin probably is going to you know, get a little push to the upside and then we make our way down to these to these lower areas here. And if you take a, a local gold pocket from that August low and bring it up to that high up here, you can see that we got a gold pocket lining up pretty much with that yearly average here. You know, a That's lot of close, people are targeting yeah. down to 31K, which, you know, I could see us kind of heading down there as well. Uh, and then really this overall uh, move could actually bring us all the way back down. Uh, to this 28k area. So I think I've seen you, Tim, talking on all these levels already. I think you have a chart that yeah. has like a good, best, and better uh, type yeah. of deal. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, definitely I'm in agreement. Um, as I said, we had a really big push up. Generally, when you have, we had a year down, we pretty much had a year up. You know, I think that we're in for like six months potentially, you know, three to six months of mm -hmm. some sideways and down. Uh, and that's just kind of normal. But uh, yeah, that's what I'd be looking for out of Bitcoin, right? Is that little potential push up. And that's a really decent move if we get it, you know, like 13, 15, maybe 20% up to back to these areas here. Uh, and then we kind of roll over. Now, what would that mean for the altcoins, right? That's kind of everybody's, you know, main focus. Uh, and for me, I actually do anticipate Ethereum, or not anticipate, it's probably the wrong word, but 
I am looking for Ethereum to potentially still make a higher a higher high than it has put in right at the twenty seven hundred dollar level. So uh, yeah. we'll see if that does come. Uh, but one thing I did want to note is that, you know, during this push here, we had Bitcoin outperforming. So you had a 216 percent move out of Bitcoin from the lows. And we're going to look at and that was from last year. We're going to look at last year. And we only had about 153 percent push out of Ethereum. So um, interesting to note there. Obviously, they're still getting you know, we're still getting some correlation around here. Uh, but if we get that push up out of Bitcoin, potentially back to like 44 K, uh, one chart is uh, pretty interesting. And it's that BTC versus ETH. Right. So that's where we can kind of gauge the reaction of like, is Bitcoin going to outperform or is Ethereum going to outperform Bitcoin for a small bit? Let me find it here. Sorry, I thought I had to load it up. But uh, yeah, bah, 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 bah. here it is. ETH over Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. ETH over Bitcoin. So uh, I got just a couple levels here. Um, that I've been looking for. And, and just like any other chart, we came down and, you know, many would look at this like a little liquidity sweep, uh, but essentially you came down, you took all the lows uh, for the last two years in a row, right? So for 2022, 2023, swept the lows, immediately gets a push up. I know that was like on some ETF news and, and things like that around there, but very technical little sweep right there. Where did we come, right? Uh, just like I was highlighting that, that yearly average on Bitcoin, uh, this is actually the yearly average. Originally, this was untapped. This is from last year. Uh, so we, rent, we ran it back straight to it pretty much uh, to start off the year so far. Uh, and for me, I'm looking to see if we start to claim that area uh, on the BTC, the ETH versus BTC chart. I'm looking to see if we get a push up into this area here. We've got a six month level. You've got an overall gold pocket here uh, and just a couple areas up here. And what that would mean for, Bic, uh, for ETH is that we might see uh, we had a 25 percent move here uh, on that last one. And then if we see something like that up here, once again, it's like another 20 percent push up um, where ETH would be outperforming Bitcoin. So that could potentially be like a 30 percent move um, while Bitcoin kind of stays stagnant. So uh, something I'm looking for, not necessarily married to it. Obviously, you got to realize we did come in at some big targets. Uh, right, 2600 yeah. uh, was was one on ETH. I'm actually interested to hear your view on ETH. I know, I, I, like I said, I've seen the Bitcoin one. Uh, what are you What are you guys looking at on ETH before I kind of pull up mine? If you don't mind. Yeah, well, th there's one thing I'll say, uh, Tisham. You can share my screen, and and, uh, and I this is the opposite of what we're talking about in terms of um, uh, price. It's not really the opposite in terms of price. Actually, it's just the same. Uh, but with Ethereum, you know, Ethereum's gonna have it is gonna have a little bit of a bullish sentiment coming in here this next quarter. Uh, there's going to be an upgrade, the Prague upgrade, I think it's called, uh, where we really should be solving some major Ethereum problems, uh, scaling problems, gas fee problems, uh, and uh, and even hopes of potentially, you know, recently with the move to proof of stake, people have been saying, oh, Ethereum is now centralized. It's no longer decentralized. It's still more decentralized than fiat currency. But I have to agree. Yeah, like Ethereum has taken some centralized steps. Well, part of this upgrade actually uh, should bring a little more decentralization to it. But when I look at this chart, this is kind of the point we're talking about. Remember the intro, everybody, when we said dead cat bounces do not equal bull runs. Well, what are we looking to cancel out a dead cat bounce? Yeah, Ethereum has been falling, fell, actually started speeding up here uh, back in October. Very quick fallback, right? And yes, we beat the top that we had in December. But when you look at the more macro level, we're, we're not setting higher highs here yet. And we are pulling back uh, pretty dramatically right now. And and the other thing I'll have to say here, uh, again, I, I'm not going to necessarily go detail in the Ethereum chart. I probably will later on this week uh, for a, one of my 830 videos. But I want to remind people historically, you know, Bitcoin dominance now starting to move up while everything's falling, right? We have never in the history seen a major move where Bitcoin drops dramatically and altcoins they have a massive rally. And, and I'm not talking about like a day or two where Bitcoin maybe falls 2%. I'm saying like if Bitcoin is now currently down 20%, more than likely it's going to drop another 10 to 20%. All, a lot of altcoins look like they're following suit. And the fact that we're seeing the dominance climb during this pullback, historically, these are times where we see Bitcoin dominance continue to make a push to the upside. And you don't necessarily see altcoins changing pace. Now, again, Ethereum has that bullish sentiment. Uh, we are, by the way, on Ethereum down below 2200 right now after a lot of uh, stuff we're working at the moment i, I said i wasn't gonna do too much ta we're, <laughs> i'll do a little bit we're we're working at the moment at breaking this structure right here we had a little bit of a rising channel going on with ethereum we broke it to the upside i was bullish this was one of the reasons why i thought we were going to conquer uh closer towards 27 2800 but we're losing that very quickly now could we bounce here absolutely i think we could i, I think there's some levels above us when you come to some smaller time frames 
Uh, let's go to one hour here. Not going to be surprised to see short-term bounces. I'm seeing a lot of charts today look like we're having some form of a bottoming out pattern. You're going to see, look at that, massively oversold at the moment down here on the hourly chart. I'm assuming it's going to say the same. Yeah, 100% oversold in the four-hour chart. Your bulls love to see that. I could see a bounce back up what looks like to its equilibrium zone where we also have this order block from Lux Algo up here to 2300, right? So that, that's a pretty decent little climb here. I could see us getting back up over that Neo cloud uh, and make a move up here, but I do not see a sustained long-term rally. In fact, the daily chart, it's looking like we're starting to make moves to the downside. Money flow within the next couple of days probably is going to cross into the red. Uh, we're, even though we have this little reversal dot, the momentum just continues to flow to the downside. And then I look at it again, historically, I, I think Bitcoin's going down. I think all coins are going down. I see the Bitcoin dominance going up. This to me is a classic repeat of what we've seen historically. Now I have a bunch of mess on my chart. I gotta, gotta get out of here for you guys. Uh, let's go to a longer time frame chart. Let's go back over here again, 20 people are gonna get tired of this eventually, but you know, it's whatever, uh, 2019, 2019, we topped out. Golden Pocket, what did we just hit? Golden Pocket had nice pullbacks with a lot of volatility, but in the same timeline, look at this, June of 2019, Bitcoin dominance, June of 2019, got to mess with this. Give me just a second. June of 19 is right here. That was not the top of the Bitcoin dominance. It was the top of the price action for Bitcoin. It was the top of the price action for Ethereum, Cardano, Litecoin, all the altcoins at the time, even though there wasn't as many as we have today. But the point is, this is that the very historical pre having decent size pullback uh, when i go back to the time before that there weren't necessarily too many altcoins around although we had litecoin and ethereum but you see these happen you see these pre having big run ups fall by significant pullback this 26 same thing happened in 2019 yeah, it's only two times historically, but at this point, that's what we have to go on. And uh, when you take a look at, at what we have going on, a lot of altcoins are a lot more overexposed. I mean, even looking at fixed range volume profile, for example, uh, when I take a look here at Bitcoin and the run we've been making, you know, you, you're seeing a lot of volume up in here. Uh, up, down the one of the reasons I'm, I'm kind of I kind of like the thirty thousand dollar range is because this is where a lot of volume is. I'm a big believer, CBO, in institutions bringing the boat back. Well, where's the boat? The boat's right here in this area, right there in that camp. Uh, when you take a look at Ethereum, you know, for example, let's go all the way back. Ethereum is one, that, you know, I don't think it's going to pull back as far. It's maturing in the space. It's maturing as far as uh, uh, crypt, uh, crypto goes, but it's camp. It, it, it probably wants to bring that camp probably somewhere back towards 1800 at the least. You know, that point of control down here towards 1600 is kind of interesting. Um, then you take a look at some big, big uh, altcoins with some massive rallies. But take a look here. Let's go look at Solana. Where would bring the boat back be for Solana? That's really rough, guys. I don't think we're going this low, but 25. I, I think I said made a video earlier today that I like the $37 range, but even just looking at this chart, 25, 26, former resistance level. You take a look at uh, AVAX. Let's look at AVAX. I can just see it right now, guys. We're gonna see uh, uh, the bring it back the boat. We're talking about back towards $20. There's a lot of bring the boat back action happening right now. And when you start to measure what those dips would mean, like this for AVAX, I didn't do it with the others, but you know, we're talking about an another 26, 27% dip on this one versus Bitcoin. Some of those levels, let's take a look there. Uh, Bitcoin, if we were to pull back down towards my great level, that's kind of my area we were talking about. We're talking about it looks severe, right? But that's only 18% versus those altcoins we're looking at closer to 30, uh, 25 to 30%. That spells bullish Bitcoin dominance. That spells historical repeat uh, what we are normally doing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a bear at the moment, but I just want to remind you guys, again, this whole video is about this. I'm going to get your take in here, CBO. But remember, this whole period, this was a 50% pullback on Bitcoin, but it's not a straight line. This is not just red candle, red candle, red candle, red candle, bottom out, let's go. Look at all of the volatility in here. We even created a little shelf of support, and then we decided to break that, turn it into resistance. It was a very choppy time. I'm expecting similar movements, not identical, similar movements to what we saw back here in the pre-having pullback, not COVID. Don't we don't we don't talk about COVID, right? It's uh, the thing we don't talk about, things we don't discuss. But I, I do see us pulling back to a significant former level of resistance. In that case, it was back here in November of 18. It was 6,600. Today, that level is sitting here closer to the $31,000, $30,000 range. 
That's one of the reasons why I have that level as my great buy opportunity. What do you think about that, CBO? What, does that track? Where do you differ? What are your thoughts? Yeah, so <clears throat> I actually have some interesting things that I kind of wanted to add to those. So, um, like I said, I'm kind of in a weird position because I'm definitely bearish on Bitcoin from 49K, right? So maybe we push back up uh, and come down. Uh, definitely, I say definitely, I'm de in the same boat that I think that we have potential to revisit much lower. Um, and, and one thing I just want to kind of wow. point out, and, uh, this is like everybody really ignores the COVID drop, right? So, uh, you know, when utilizing volume profile, it's a really interesting tool here, right? So um, I, I look at uh, the naked points of control is a big one, right? So those are high volume targets that generally come, you know, get get tagged um, after the session is closed. So, for example, if it's a month, a quarter, a year, once again, you know, once that time frame closes, you know, generally that that area gets revisited, right? Is it, it's like almost like if you're painting a room and you miss the spot and then the price starts coming back into that, right? You re-enter that room, you see the spots on the wall, you come back over and you kind of hit it with the paint, right? So um, yeah. this drawdown right here, which was very interesting because everybody just says, okay, not technical at all, you know, it's a black swan. Uh, January, so I, I really do want to highlight this and not in the sense of like last cycle this, last cycle that, but just in the sense of price action and looking at something that, you know, just normal prices cut all the time, right? We know the, the gold pockets occur every single day, every single week, right? Like just like we yeah. just came up and hit a macro gold pocket. We did it here as well. Um, on this huge push up here, we had the January range right here and naked point of control, right? So we left the point of control untapped. All this was was a really nice backfill. Um, obviously, it shot through a little bit there. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, then from there, it's just off to the races. This was actually another one. I'm pretty sure that this was like in this quarter, give or take, um, right there, right? So you had another one right there on that China. This was like the big 42% China push. And shout out to Magic Internet Money for pointing both of these out. Uh, I did not identify yeah. these myself. So, um, <clears throat> but what's interesting about those is that just on a technical, those are two technical reasons to come back down to those areas. And once again, yeah. I had all those areas pulled up where you're looking at like, you know, smaller things in this region here. And I'm just, I'm giving like now it's like big for instances where it's like, if, if anybody thinks that it's impossible to come back to like, sub 30 obviously these are good areas but i think that everybody's really heavily targeting those is like they're all in zones which you know by all means do what you gotta do um but for me looking at this once again when we came on the way up here we got a quarter naked point of control all the way back down here at 23k for january it's all the way back down to like 16.5 not necessarily saying we'd go back there but you know if we were to see some pullbacks here uh there's just a lot of like efficiencies inefficiencies down below us mm -hmm. i guess is what i'm trying to point out and like that does go all the way back down to the lows honestly so uh things like that can definitely occur and you know to your point it's it's probably not going to be all the way you know this took this took 14 months uh and that's just from this level here right that's not even from the lows in november so from november to the high uh yeah like 14 months right so uh and look at all this in between right so you got to be prepared for that and just be aware that you know things can happen things can change the news can change a new war could break out, right? Um, yeah. But all of that aside, we hit some major targets and now we're looking for pullbacks. So that just is what it is uh, on that one. Now for ETH, on the other hand, uh, I have a question and you brought up some yeah. news uh, about like the ETF potential or you said some things that like- Well, uh, ETH I was talking about the upgrade. The, the ETF, we have no idea. I mean, with- I'm sorry, the, the yeah, when, uh, I'm honestly, I'm not too up to date on the on the news on that side. So what is it? Yeah. What, uh, what are some dates? I'm just curious on uh, whatever that upgrade is. The, They've thrown around late February, March. So we're talking about mid to late quarter one uh, okay. adoption on Ethereum, which again, there there should be historically, you know, those are the types of events you see the run up into it. That that's a, that's a buy the rumor, sell the news. Of course, right. now prices are dipping, so people you know, aren't buying the rumor at the moment. But it is something that's right. on the horizon. Yeah. So all right. So for me, and then this is like something that. Once again, you can't marry this idea, but it's just something I've been tracking for a really long time. I think I actually brought this up on on when you guys were still on Jeb's show uh, way back in the day because it was a potential for it way back here. Obviously, it didn't play out, um, but there's a huge harmonic pattern, right? Which is just a sequence of Fibonacci's, and it's it's called the, it's a it's a bearish bat. It's a bullish pattern upon completion, as we you know would see a major impulse to the upside. Um, but I've been looking for this to complete like around Q1, end of Q1. The end of this time frame is like April. Um, so obviously it's not like super exact, but 
uh, it would be yeah. interesting because you know we've we've put in a pretty good uh, amount of you know time and effort here, uh, and this is dating back all the way to March of 22. So that's a huge pattern that's kind of un unfolding here for ETH. Um, uh -huh. Interesting thing would be like if, if we were to see a move like this, you know what would be what would Bitcoin be up to? Because that's like a 50% move to the upside. So would would Bitcoin yeah. just be changing? Would uh, would we get that you know final uh, ETH versus BTC huge spike and the altcoins outperform for a few weeks? Um, is a question. So, and maybe we don't get it at all, but that's kind of just something that um, yeah. I have in the back of my mind, uh, I guess, uh, like on the back burner here. And as far as locally for ETH, right, uh, we came into pretty much just a one to one as far as a target would go. So, just a, almost like a measured move. Let me see if I can expand this. Uh, let's see. Well, I guess honestly, like if you're looking at these two peaks, right, just as simple as it can get macro high to low you got a gold pocket yep. if you're looking yep. at this swing high to low right we came up to the gold pocket so i'll just leave it at that right you hit a you hit a major target right as bitcoin's doing it as well uh we got the pullback just like bitcoin um but i'm really looking to see how we react around some of these areas here because if if we do get one of those situations and mind you i'm i'm in from eth is my biggest holding uh mm -hmm. with a couple of other altcoins like i think I, but for me i actually kind of got out of most things except for my og litecoin from like way back in 2017 it's just like stashed away and then i have right. near protocol is my last one i'm holding on to and and ETH for a potential move up into this like um yeah same same deal here right we've got some levels i think you know we, we kind of bounce around uh we've got a new yearly average and a couple of just key levels down below us which is just below huh? that, that that little flash crash low uh, so I'll be looking to see, you know, what we do in these areas if we come into it uh, just on a, once again, a simple, try to keep it as simple as possible, a little gold pocket action, right? Uh, lines yep. up really nicely with that, like right under 1900 bucks, enough to stop everybody out, get everybody really shaken up back under 2K. Uh, and then from here, it would be interesting to note. So if you take a trend based Fibonacci from the overall low to our summer high, to our little wick low right here, you'll note that the one to one. So basically, that's just a measured move. For, if you were to take this, uh, line it up, and then put it from that low, that's essentially a 100% impulse to the same area here, right? So uh, if we were to take something like that, and we don't we don't know if the low is in yet or if it's going to come in this region, um, yeah. but it'd be interesting if we got something like that where the high is here. Maybe we pull back to this area down in this region, right? Or maybe it's even right. It's in at the moment. Um, gold pocket lines up at this 3k level, one to one expansion, you know, just once again, just things to kind of note here, um, in the, in the potential here, I guess, uh, the big level for me, I guess, like everybody, the next question would be like, well, what would make you think that that, that area is coming? And it's, uh, the 2023 high. So claim the 2452. So we're living above there on a daily. Let's see if we close any weeklies above there. We have not. So I guess I would say almost a weekly we closed one came right back under it. Um, but yeah, the 2452 area is a big one for me. Start living above there. And I think that that's the, the launch pad. So um, maybe we come into this region here. Uh, either way, it's going to make for a good little, you know, dead cat bounce type of deal. Right. Where maybe we come down yeah. here. Gold pocket lines up right with that area anyways. Take profit. See if we flip it. Uh, and then maybe we take it up a bit. So that's kind of that's kind of my ideas here for. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think this is this is all good. I think you know it's a good time to remind everybody. You know, there's there's no such thing as a person who knows perfectly the tops or the bottoms of the markets. Uh, I, I want to ask you a question that potentially could open up a small, uh, what I would think is a healthy disagreement slash uh, discussion slash debate. Uh, we always love to have those with COVID. You know, this is I, I've heard it a couple different ways. What are your views on COVID prices? I, I know people who are solely chart people. You know, we're both technical analysts, uh, but I think we both do pay attention to news and we pay attention to stuff. Solely chart analysts, they'll tell, they'll look for the levels and say, hey, this is why it hit it. We knew it was going to hit it. It had to respect these levels, yada, yada, yada. Of course, news people will say this came out of nowhere. We call it a black swan event. You couldn't have prepared for it. Uh, I'll just go ahead and let you know where my thoughts are. You know, we were talking about Bitcoin. Of course, Ethereum had that huge dip. I do think there are levels to keep an eye on. Like when you were going through and you were showing that value area, that point of control from way down at the bottom of Bitcoin, I think it's good for people to be aware of levels. Uh, real quick, Tisha, let's go ahead and let's go to my screen, kind of what we're going to talk about right here. So just in case you guys are wondering and want to follow along, 
uh, earlier, CVO was talking about this pullback. It was kind of pretty. I don't know if I'm doing exactly how you did it, but if you were to look at the the uh, value, the fixed range volume profile down here in this little range, look at how it came down almost perfectly right there to the former point of control. One of the things that CVO was talking about, that's a level that a chartist would look at and say, hey, we saw some significance back to this level. There's a lot of untapped things happening back here. We had to pull all the way back there, right? I ascribe to the concept that even though that level was there and people should have been aware of it, when you look at how the price played out and the fact that it was a black swan event, it was something that you could not have prepared for. It took the world by storm. The news reacted to it. The fact that we had a nice pullback, uh, 50% back to a former resistance level. And take a look here. Another reason I think this, we, we wick down, have you know, we talk about blow off tops, blow off bottom, V bottom shoot right back up to where within a couple of days we're right back in the same area that we'd found support my personal belief is if covid was not a thing this would have been the bottom back here the december date we would have bought about at 6600 we would have kind of slowly but surely made our way up into the right into the having event we would have then had our explosive bull market i'm not going to make an argument that covid capped uh, the market if anything i feel like a rubber band effect uh, it helped spark an explosive 2021. But I'm I'm not convinced that this price action had to happen. And in the same breath, I will say, again, let's go to a different chart where I don't have so much chaos just so we can see it. I, I want people to be aware of the levels. Uh, you, you saw back on this other one, I have my solid, good, great, amazing. But I also said, guys, Bitcoin is in trouble if we lose this amazing level. If we drop below 25,000, we are in trouble. Why? Because when you look at this market, when you look at sorry, when you look at Bitcoin, we're in a bullish trend right now. I'm not saying we have to respect this trend line right here. I'm not saying if we lose this that we're bearish, but I am afraid of losing this level right here, twenty five thousand. That's not something we have seen happen. When you come back over here, you know, even though we did, we kind of had a lot of parabolic movements right here. We bounced up, had a little bit of a settling down here towards uh, forty eight. Then we wrestled all the way higher, higher, higher. This was the level to me that we would give us in trouble. Of course, COVID brought us lower than that level, brought us down to a level to watch out for that disaster, but no one really should have planned it. If there was no COVID, if there was no chaos that took the world by storm, a healthy move below 4,800 would have been very scary. When you go back to previous bear markets, I mean, look at this. Uh, you know, We come back here to 2015, 2016. Up and to the right. Yes, we have pullbacks, but we never set lower lows whatsoever during that time period. And so for me, unless we see some form of a black swan event, in which case, yeah, we'll talk about the CME gap that's right here below 20. We'll talk about a double bottom down at 15,000. We can even go as so far, you know, if we want to get really bearish, start talking about the 10,000, the 3,000s. Is there is there rationale and reasons for those moves? We could show you on the charts, but the fact is that that's on a, in a healthy bullish trend, not going to happen. And to me, the healthiness of this bullish trend is lost when we lose 2,500. I know there's some stuff here at 23. I know there's some stuff here at 20. Potentially a black swan event only wicks us down to those levels. But nothing normal wicks us down those levels. If we're just trugging along and price finds itself below 25,000, that could show a real weakness, a real problem with the world's adoption of Bitcoin and a, a massive suppression of the Bitcoin price I'm not predicting we're going to go below those levels. I'm saying if we do, I actually am a little fearful unless there's some sort of a black swan event catalyst. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Do you think that – do you agree with that take? Do you disagree with that take? Uh, what are your thoughts about a price potential below 25000 and what that means for the future of Bitcoin? Yeah, so um... – yeah, full disclosure, right? We've covered some pretty big ideas here that most people don't usually go through, right? Everybody kind of yeah. tends to keep to a little bit more of a safe um, outlook. And, and honestly, the shorter the, the the outlook, obviously, is a little bit more realistic and, and very much so. Like I, the price action does not have to go anywhere, right? And all we're doing here is uh, evaluating, speculating and deciding if it's something worth like getting into based on your own you know, analysis. So um, that's all that this is, right? Where it's like if if. 49k that is definitely an area where i knew i wasn't going to be buying um end of the year we were coming into major targets for the altcoins that i had identified for myself so i was pulling out um i still look for maybe a potential move out of eth but as far as yeah some of these levels down below that are there and you know in in going 
going to your question on like, you know, did the COVID drop have to happen? Obviously, no, it didn't have to happen. Um, but it's just one of those things where you have to be able to, you know, identify, you have to kind of manage it as it comes, right? So for me, yeah. like right now, I, okay. as we're trading at 40,000 ish, and as we were trading into 49, I'm aware that 16,600 can very well be visited tomorrow or in six months or in five months. And it would not shock me. It would not make me nervous. That would be a very big area for me to really get, you know, like excited for almost. Um, yeah. Just the same thing as that COVID drop, right? Like I, like obviously I wasn't trading this, this strategy back then. So, um, but at this point, like, yeah, like it, nothing really surprises me. I'm, I'm prepared. I feel like for most uh, areas, um, I identify some really big areas to get like the long term investments at or I just prepare like, you know, if you're buying or if you're scaling in at 30K, you got to be prepared to be like, all right, well, this could go to 16. And if, you know, that's the case, I'm either going to be underwater in my long term holdings or I just buy more or whatever. Like, you know, you just want to be not in a position where, you know, FTX and all that, like once again, the news kind of starts piling on, um, yeah. which, which the market will react to the news, obviously, but it gets, you know, very react like you know the, the the higher the price goes obviously the news is amazing you know at we had the cme futures get launched right at 2017's bull run high we had the coinbase uh stock market listing was a huge etf styled thing back in april of 2021 right before a huge fall we had you know crypto.com you know staple center becoming the you know whatever um right at the high there as well like so there's always this extremely high like everybody's getting really excited thinking that like huge uh, adoption is coming right around the corner um right at these levels and then vice versa at the lows but uh maybe i got off on a tangent there but to answer the big no, question no, good. yeah on the news is that if, if you look behind me right there there's a book it's called the secret life of uh real estate and banking by philip anderson right and uh, that is uh basically the 18 to 20 year housing cycle so that's kind of what i base a lot of my high time frame analysis on um, so for me, the four-year cycle on Bitcoin, I think, is kiboshed in a sense. Granted, I know that that's not necessarily what everybody likes to hear or How think, but you. I think we've really been just building out the very first 20-year cycle on Bitcoin. Uh, um, right. And, you know, what, whatever that means. So in the sense of the Black Swan event, uh, you know, in the housing market, obviously, everything's going to correlate into that the stock market, now crypto, uh, other assets, commodities. But um, this 18-year cycle basically is a, you know initial seven to 10-year rally. You get a black swan event. You get two to four years of sideways uncertainty that always ends in high inflation, high, high inflation, high interest rates. Everybody expects a recession, and then you get about a five to seven year face melt. Um, as far as the higher time frame, obviously there's pullbacks in between. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of iterations of that is in the '60s. You had uh, the initial run up. You had a, a Cuban Missile Crisis was your black swan event. A couple of years go by, high inflation, high interest rates. Everybody expected a recession. You get another five to seven year impulse. Then you had in the '80s. Uh, seven five to seven year impulse there you had i believe it was the gulf war was the black swan event not the only one but there at least was that uh a couple years go by high uncertainty interest rates inflation everybody expect a recession uh continuation to the upside the next two you at least the three of us uh, will know and uh 1993 was uh, the beginning of the housing cycle there uh seven to ten years go by it was really like uh what was it eight the or savings nine? and loan crisis if i'm not, if I'm not mistaken <laughs> um, 9-11 hits, right? So yeah. two, three years go by. What do we have? High inflation, high interest rates. Everybody expected a recession in 2003. What did we get? Five more years to the upside. 2008 was the high. You get a couple years of retracement. 2011 is essentially where I think we're at in this market. And for me, COVID was literally the last time I ever paid attention to the news because of that book right there. I was prepared for. So I'll go back to this. So 2011 was the beginning of this housing market cycle in theory. Uh, we had 2009, obviously the birth of Bitcoin. Um, so in the in the realm, and these are average, high time frame averages. So it doesn't have to be exactly 18 or 20 years, right? It could be 17, it could be 23, whatever. But 2011, seven to 10 years go by. We get 2020, COVID, Black Swan event. Where did we just finish off? Three years later, high interest rates, high inflation. Everybody expected a recession. And in theory, we're going to have a pretty decent next few years, at least in the housing market, which will transpire into the crypto and everything else. Uh, so for news wise, like I was expecting a huge news catalyst in 2018. Those two years later, because I was like, you know, waiting for it. I thought it was going to be Trump, and I don't want to. I'm not trying to say anything that's going to get us booted, but How uh, there you? was like huge uh, uh, issues with you know North Korea and stuff back then, right? And like everybody yeah. was always worried about that. Nothing ever came of it. And then obviously we got COVID in 2020. So um, huge correction across all the markets. And so for me, once again, that's just like I, I pay attention for the news. Obviously, fiscal policy is important, you know, things that are going to affect 
all things and regulations as they come in. But uh, I, I honestly, I don't get wrapped up in the news in the sense or like where I think that a uh, price can't go back to 16 K or anything like that. And if it does, if it's wrapped around the news, I, for, like I said, I, I will be targeting that in a different fashion, I suppose. Uh, and this is a great time CVO to check in on the headlines of the day really quickly. <laughs> yeah. No, you made no. some excellent, you made some excellent points in there. Uh, it's a good, it's a good reaction. Um, I have also heard of those, you know, those mega psych super cycles, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they're, they're interesting that I, I think there's a lot to, to break out there. I will say the invention of the computer though, and the internet could, could kind of shake up the, just a real quick response on that. Actually, I'd be curious to see what you say. Cause you've, you've, you've read that book much more recently than I have. What are, what are your thoughts on, you know, even the spreadsheet, you know, uh, technologies like that, like the online spreadsheet, computational services that are that are provided and now of course ai do you think that that's going to throw a wrench in the in that 15 to 20 year cycle i mean it's hard to tell obviously it's hard to tell. But, uh, so, so far uh we're on we're on par uh and then uh, you know as okay. far as like even, even looking forward in the next five to six years when people look you know say, like when i bring this idea up people are like how is that possible how can houses go any higher how can the stock market go any higher or anything like that and it might just be everything you just noted Right. AI could be the, the craze that brings things up and um, whatever that that means. And, and then I don't know what it'll look like when we get to the end of it. But then you got the 2029 hundred year cyclical Great Depression uh, cycle as well to kind of think about that literally comes in right at the end of housing market 20 year cycle, crypto potential first 20 year cycle. Uh, so things like that. So it's, you know, not married to anything. Just once again, just kind of keeping things out there uh, and just being open minded, I guess. Yep. But uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I, I think that uh, if anything, it probably is going to be like the lead into why, why things kind of continue higher here. So, okay. So I've got the, I do have some news. I was being somewhat facetious, but <laughs> the news that I'm going to show you actually it highlights exactly why CVO doesn't pay attention to the news. And in my 9 a.m. live streams where I cover the news, I do try to what I try to do is interpret what is important and what is noise. So these two stories are are kind of a mix of both. So the first one I would say is noise because of who's doing the downgrade. Uh, Coinbase falls after JP Morgan downgrade stock to overweight uh, on disappointing Bitcoin ETF catalyst. So this would be kind of a this would be a nice headline to fade, right? To go in the opposite direction, be a contrarian for this headline. I'm not going to get into the details because it kind of says it all in the headline. The other headline though, it's, it's one that you can't ignore, but man, we see it every cycle. This the, And I'll get into the details here. So massive 200,000 Bitcoin dump expected in 60 days. Mt. Gox update. Uh, Colin Wu, a prominent figure in the crypto journalism space, nice title, has reported that Mt. Gox recently initiated an email verification process for users seeking confirmation of ownership for exchange address accounts designated by payment addresses for Bitcoin. We all know how that works. Uh, the move follows December 2023 reports from creditors who confirmed receiving compensation in yen uh, through their PayPal. So Japanese victims of the Mount, Gro- Mount Gox crisis have already received payment compensation uh, in the form of yen. So the Bitcoin there or the whatever the digital asset there was liquidated by Mt. Gox and then they were paid out in yen uh, fiat. Gox is rumored to be releasing into the market uh, estimates vary, ranging 142,000 uh, to 200,000 Bitcoin. The lack of consensus among sources has prompted increased scrutiny within the crypto community. Uh, market participating are particularly attentive as the countdown begins for a potential 200,000 Bitcoin release within the next 60 days. So this is an excellent example of, of vetting the news, right? The first story, noise. The second story, potentially extremely impactful on the supply and and demand dynamics of Bitcoin. So I'll let you guys chew on that one. Tim, Tim, what are your first initial thoughts on that one? Because I know that you like to, you like to pile in on the the Mt. Gox stories. The the first one I would say is bullish. And and I don't mean price action in terms of right now. I I do think price will continue to dip. I think that it's convenient to post those stories to keep pushing price down because the underlying secret, you know, narrative here, guys, is that, The world has woken up. The whales and the institutions have woken up to the financial giant that is Bitcoin. Uh, Now, I think they're still lagging a little high as far as crypto uh, as a whole. They are looking at things like Ethereum and Solana and Chainlink, which is why those are some some top movers. And, of course, the retail investors will pump some of the others to do some good 20, 30 Xs. 
but they're waking up. What well, what do you do? You don't just jump on the the bandwagon. That's not what if I'm a wealthy individual, I don't jump on bandwagons. I buy things where I want to buy them. Uh, the Mount Gox thing has been looming over our heads for forever. 2014. It's one of those things. It's one of those things. Like, have you ever like told a lie, and then you have to live with that lie, and it forces you to make other lies, and all of a sudden you're you're just like it's just it's like monkey on your back, and and then you finally tell the truth, and even though you might have to deal with the consequences of the truth. At least you're no longer living with this monkey on your back, and it's a very relieving feeling, right? We have been living with the Mount Gox monkey on the back of Bitcoin could crash us at any moment. To get this monkey off our back right now is long-term bullish. It's one we don't we want to keep hearing. Oh, Mount Gox might sell. Mount Gox might sell. Mount Gox might sell. No, you know what they're going to do? They're going to sell into this market, doing exactly what the institutions want. Bring the boat back so they can jump on with cheaper Bitcoin. They will then take Bitcoin to the moon, and we will no longer have to hear about freaking Mount Gox. What's your take, CVO? And then I do have an amazing factoid of the day from our factoid elf. Oh, man, Mount Gox is literally, it's, it's interesting that that's even still uh, a buzzword, right? Like, so like up until this last couple, like the ETF was this last year and a half buzzword of choice, and it's going to remain to be it with ETH and as other altcoins and stuff like that potentially get listed. Um, but Mount Gox and China bands were like the number one, um, just FUD, right? If, if you're going to go around with that. Uh, definitely something to keep in mind. I know, like, for example, you got like grayscale offloading some some crypto now, right? Um, but once again, it's just like, you know, you can definitely, I think that it's something that you can pair up, you know, with your analysis as well, right? So for me, when we're looking at Bitcoin coming into, you know, macro targets, $50,000 almost, um, ETF gets listed, and then you have all these, you know, people offloading, whatever, uh, it, it makes sense. And, you know, same thing with the Mt. Gox stuff. I mean, it's just, it's always just an easy, low hanging fruit. Um, you know, when you get those random, like kind of flushes in the leverage and all that stuff, when everybody's just super excited about uh, everything or, or super scared at the other side, you get these random news articles that can drop at, you know, and, and I will say one thing about news that is the timing is impeccable. Uh, so, but, you know, if you can prepare for some of these moves ahead of time or at least be, you know, not surprised by them is the key. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I would say. For you know the 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 Mount Gox stuff, I, I think that it's always going to be hanging over everybody's head, um, or at least in, until like regulations really come down. It's just an easy, uh, yep. like article to like kind of like not not article, but like something to just kind of like always be in fear of. I guess like it's just like oh, at some point Satoshi could come back too yeah. and unleash the the millions of coins that he has, and then that would just flush the market out, right? So, um, yeah. yeah. So, and I feel the same way, Tim. You know, basically, it would be nice to go ahead and rip this band aid off. Um, yeah. You know. Well, and, and, but, but the reason why I say it again, bullish, I'll, I'll say it again because I, I was reflecting this, but I want to say it specifically. The fear has always been that Mt. Gox will sell off and there won't be the buyers to get it. We have the buyers now, right? This massive bullish sentiment with institutions waking up, we have all the buyers. This is the perfect time for Mt. Gox to go ahead and sell without causing a massive capitulation in Bitcoin price action. That's why this story is, to me, so bullish. Does that mean price go up from here? No. That means price crash from here. We deal with the consequences of Mt. Gox. But the monkey gets off our back. It's the perfect timing for the monkey to come off our back because the buyers are waiting. They just want to see their price action. That's probably somewhere uh, somewhere above 25000 somewhere around 30-ish, maybe a little bit low, below thirty. I yeah. heard monkey on the back. Oh my gosh, Deezy. Are, are you talking about mutant apes? Horde apes? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh my God, dude, you got to tell them about that secret level and indicator. No, that's for the members only. 50x trade, Tim? That's, that's, that's members only. Members. <laughs> An excellent time to remind everybody uh, to become a member of the Investing Bros. Uh, you definitely won't regret it. Guys, yeah. uh, I've got one more story. We'll get into our factoid of the day. This, the last story, it's not really a story. It's just kind of another big pat on the back for Cardano, Santiment's number one development, uh, the top coin by development activity, notable GitHub commits over the last 30 days. Again, Cardano, second place Polkadot, third place Kusama, and then Optimism, and on down the line. Now, let's get into the factoid of the day, brought to you by decrypted.tax guys if you're looking for 
a great crypto tax solution. Go over there to decrypted.tax. Tim? Yeah, real quick, real quick, before we move uh -oh. on, teacher, before, uh -oh. uh, this is a question. I just want people to know, though, like, I, I just got a bunch of my stuff this week. Like, people don't like to think about taxes. Nobody likes taxes. We hate taxes. I know. I, I just got my, I just got Coinbase taxes, my papers. Oof. I got the different jobs. I had. I said all this in the mail. It is time, guys, to start doing your taxes. And get Again, speaking of monkeys on your back, get the tax monkey off your back. Even, even if you're not sure, click on the link in the description, guys. Go have your 60-minute free consultation. Ernest is not just a CPA. He's a tax attorney. He knows everything there is to know about crypto taxes. So even if you're thinking, man, I'm just going to do my own tax, just take the call. Hear what he has to say. If you want to do it with him, go for it. If you don't, get some free advice from a, a crypto tax attorney. Click on the link. Schedule the call. Get the tax monkey off your back. All right. Now we can do fact toward of the day. All right. The fact toward of the day brought to you by Decrypted.tax is... What country hosts Earth's lowest elevation on land of negative 1,360 feet? Is it A, Israel, China, Djibouti, <laughs> Egypt, or Virginia Tech campus? Okay. Definitely Virginia North Tech. Uh, okay. Virginia Tech is not a country, but I like that you put it in the same category. You know, hokey country is a thing. Uh, I would, you know, before I read the options, I was thinking country. Now I'm gonna say we can pro. Uh, I'm uh, country. I was thinking Africa. My brain. Okay. I was looking ahead. <laughs> we can rule out Israel because the Middle East is not a. That like I guess Israel is a country, but it's like Middle East. That's not a continent. So I, I don't think that the answer is gonna be Israel, Middle East. Okay. Uh, also, Israel is famous for its mountains uh, and okay. uh, hills that there's stories about in the Bible. Uh, China, Asia. I don't think it's the. I think it's Africa. My brain was thinking Africa. I think it's going to be Djibouti. I think it's going to be closer to uh, the ocean. All right. I'm going to say Egypt. All you right. think it's Egypt? How, how far is Egypt from an ocean? It, it's, well, the Mediterranean is not an ocean. It's, it's a sea. Yeah. Uh, so it's very far from an ocean. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Djibouti. I think the closer you are to the ocean. I just like that name. Djibouti. What what about the word the name Djibouti really gets you excited, CVO? All right, we're gonna skip on past that one. The answer to the factoid of the day is Israel. Damn. Wow. That's Both that's how that's how you do it right there. Yep. So I, uh, I called it perfectly in the opposite direction. I don't know what this <laughs> the one it could not be. I mean Virginia Tech was in the running though. I feel like <laughs> So Israel, which also shares the Dead Sea with Jordan and, and Palestine, it is uh, very, very deep, um, but yeah. it is not okay. inhabited by water. Uh, the next biggest is going to be Syria with the Sea of Galilee, and then Djibouti comes up, uh, bringing up the rear, uh, if you will, and that is going to be Lake Asal. And then Wait, China you also up the has rear? A Egypt is below it. Well, Tim, you know what? Sometimes things are more important just to, to have a And to be fair, about. wouldn't bringing up the rear be Virginia Tech? It wasn't even on the list. And and here is where the Dead Sea is. And uh, this is a, another shot of the Dead Sea. Okay. Very nice, you know. good-looking type of infographics here, courtesy of everything you could ever imagine on Wikipedia. Yeah, shout out, shout out to Ashley. Ashley Wells did get it correct. Oh, wow. Uh, Ash. She's the inverse Tim on the factoid of the day, which is very yeah. good in this case. Good thing to be. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing. I, I'll say, T-Shirt, again, some some fact, and I know you don't make these. I know it's the elf that makes these. Right. I just want you to – You, I don't right. get to talk with him. You always have to pass along my messages yeah. to him. Some of the questions of the day, I don't know if they're ever going to help me in life. I feel like potentially this is a, a piece of information, knowing that Israel is the lowest point on earth could save my life someday in case you know like i get kidnapped and someone mm -hmm. says tim to live right now if you don't tell us the country with the lowest point on earth we will kill you yeah. i don't know if i'm supposed to say that on youtube it's YouTube gonna be tough because you say it's a there's it's a hot it is a tie between israel jordan palestine because the, the now if they and... ask me what continent it's in i'm not going to say the middle east uh I that think, would get me you know well, i don't know that the middle east finished. i don't think the middle east is a continent it's I think not, that would be Africa. Like, so everything else you had, is, there sure. was a continent. Uh, yeah. and, uh, what continent so is Virginia all. Tech part of? <laughs> the, Virginia Tech is in its own continent. Virginia Tech has its own continent. It's called uh, Hokie Nation. Blacksburg is the city. Hokie ah. Nation is the country and the continent. It's a one and, one and all. One and all oh, thing. Middle East is a continent. 
Like no, it's not. No, it, well, some some of the maps are showing that it is, but it looks okay, like... It is, but it's definitely not. According to Geography Realm, which, as we all know, is the, the definitely the authority on this, it, it, would, be in, it would be in Asia. Yeah. Um, but again, some of the other ones do list Middle East as a continent. Um, well, that's a wrong map. Know. So if that ever shows up on the factoid of the day and I lose one of these because they say that Middle East was a continent, I will lose. Someone said it earlier. Tim's losing his banana as well as monkey talk. I would lose my banana. Well, speaking point. of losing things, Tim, you notoriously lost a bet about okay. when the spot Bitcoin ETF would be launched. And Gosh. I won and I got a free stake. And now, live on yeah. screen, you can feast your eyes. I, I got to All feast my, my teeth on the steak. You guys can feast your eyes on this. Surprise. Ooh. There we go. We are here at Longhorn Steakhouse. I have ordered myself a steak. That has nothing to do with anything, so don't worry about it. That is a steak. And the meal equivalency was over $35. Is that correct, teacher? Over $35? It was correct. All right, but we need a non-biased source. Smay, was that over $35? Um, uh... It me. <laughs> Bitcoin! <laughs> All right, there we go. Good enough. <laughs> All right, there you go. Video oh, evidence. Hey. I'm so sad that I did not... Was not. I literally live in Naples, basically. Like I, when you guys were there, I'm assuming that's where you were. No, uh, no, that was that was back in Gainesville. Yeah, the but video is actually oh, okay, in Gainesville. Okay, okay. I was about to say, dang, I was like, I thought when you were you guys at that event. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was in You're Gainesville. Really- Tim, Tim actually still owes me a stake in Naples, but he he was nice enough yeah. to buy me one in what? Gainesville. Down on fifth, <laughs> maybe that three hundred dollars stake waiting on you. Goodness, I'm gracious. just messing with you, Tim. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I we- do look forward to when you buy me a stake. Uh, because Gary Gensler is still in the SEC when an ETF or Ethereum is approved. Yes, I, I so we do have an ongoing one. bet. Tim, yeah. thank you for bringing that up. I yes. bet that it, that Gary Gensler will not be voting on the Ethereum spot ETF. He, he thinks that Gary Gensler will be gone by the time we have an approval of an Ethereum ETF. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would you? Who do you think's going to be uh, buying the other person a stake in that bet, CBO? As Who a big news guy. Shroom, Shroom thinks that Gary Gensler will be gone, or you do? Yes. Uh, uh, no, he think, I think Gary Gensler will be still in the SEC approving the Ethereum okay. ETF. He thinks that he will not. Yeah. I, I, from just a wild shot in the dark, I get, I think I'd go Tim's probably going to get his stake yeah. to date. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think so. You, and, uh, you guys got to wake <laughs> up. You got to wake up to the truth. Come on, get your head out of the sand. Uh, it's those big, says heavy Tim, beards pulling down on oh, your brain cells. Bedridden <laughs> says Tim owes everyone a stake. Goodness gracious, I would be broke very fast if I got everyone a stake. Have you seen take steak tangent? I don't know what the steak's like down where you guys are. It's not terrible, but I saw this. It, I saw this TikTok. I she probably was in California, but this lady was showing she was buying a Chuck steak. If you guys sure. know what Chuck steaks are, not a very expensive steak. Right. Uh, in my area, usually somewhere around five dollars a pound. I haven't bought one in a while, but five dollars a pound usually. This sucker Crazy. was nine seventy a pound, and that is not a nice steak. Wherever she was, I have got to imagine ribeyes are probably sitting over twenty dollars a pound. Uh, her sirloins are probably sitting at like you know fifteen dollars a pound. It's just ridiculous. Mm, steak prices steak. are going up. Uh, by the time you buy me a steak, my steak's going to be a lot smaller for thirty-five dollars t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> you can have a man. small steak by then. This is going to be ridiculous. Goodness gracious! Well, good. Well, we have like we have like a minute left here. Let's get one question, and then we're going to be wrapping it out. Jonathan uh, Derby said he I'll misses that guy talking about Smay. I yeah, we Yeah, he he got to join us for dinner, and I was like, we're not going to get away without a. a Cameo from Smay. We're still trying to get him for every now and then to come on the show. He said during the weekday is an absolute no go. Maybe one of these Saturday special edition shows we can get Smay to come on. Look at that guy. The boy's, the boy's looking good, man. He is. He, he is. is looking good. He's got a great uh, haircut, I, too. Yeah, no Crocs <laughs> anymore. Not that you guys got to appreciate his daily Crocs no. the way we did. And if you didn't know Smay, Smay was always in some sort of. Um, he was always wearing a bright colored branded hat. Right. Uh, he was always in some bright colored, usually um, anime shirt. And then uh, he had these bright yellow Crocs. Well, new reformed Smay doesn't wear hats supposedly now. 
He wears nice button up shirts and he had a nice pair of Nikes. Uh, and he says that's his normal attire now. So he's changing. He's a he's a, a new man. He's got that crypto money now. That's right. Yeah. CVO, where can folks find you if they want to follow up on your TA, if they want to keep up with you and all of your brilliance? Uh, you can check uh, pretty much the uh, hub is on uh, leadingcrypto.io. Um, otherwise, I saw you guys like tag my Twitter. So I, I post a lot of things there. Uh, you can also catch me on uh, Verified Investing with Garrett Soloway at times. Uh, so kind of all over the place. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, like the Twitter and leadingcrypto.io would probably be uh, the top two just kind of uh, funnel into if you're interested to kind of kick it with me anymore. Awesome. Perfect. 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 Well, thank you so much for being here, man. It has been a pleasure. We're going to get you on again really soon. Uh, for everybody else who wants to see some more charts, guys, if you're in our Discord, we talk about charts all the time. If you're a member, you can request charts. Otherwise, we'll be back tomorrow morning with the 8.30 uh, morning pre-record. Uh, a little falter there. 8.30 a.m. pre-record. T-Shroom's 9 a.m. news and tomorrow's 3 p.m. live show. Don't miss a single one. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Paper, turn that matter to cake. Money like Lego, connect the dots that bank. We are investing bros. We are investing bros. Investing. Army pipe, lethal on trade. Entries and exits, worthy of praise. Tim, the professor of the TA. Shout it out loud on the PA. T Shrooms News, catch a word. Doing better than what he deserves. Beamer, leave no evidence. Soon fly coop with his dividends. Huh? Trying to make paper. Turn that battery cake. Money like Lego. Connect the dots that bank. We are investing bros. We are investing bros. Investing.